creating psychology students. Before we unpack the difference between acute stress and chronic stress, let's just take a step back and explore the broader notion of what we actually mean by stress, starting with an explanation of the stressor-stress relationship. So a stressor is the source of stress. It's the cause. And the stressor could be in the form of an internal stressor, which could be biological in nature, e.g. due to aches and pains, due to disease, etc. Or it could be psychological. So it could be due to worrying about something, anxiety, rumination, uh, a lack of resilience. So internal stressors, the origin is within the body. An external stressor, as you can imagine, comes from the origin is without, outside the body. So it could be in a social context. So that could be due to issues with um, blending in with peers, etc. at school, in the workplace. It could be due to cultural uh, differences, particularly if we're in a foreign land, or it could be environmental, e.g. due to climate, crowding, etc. So a stressor, regardless of whether it's internal or external, causes stress. So the stressor is the cause, the stress is the effect. Now, when defining stress, there's a few key descriptors that I want my students to include, particularly in relation to the VCE course. So it's a state of psychobiological tension. So if we think about that dual relationship in terms of some of the physiological changes and the mental changes that go along with being exposed to stressors triggered by either internal or external stressors, as we just went through, that's challenging our ability to cope. So when differentiating whether it's acute stress or chronic stress, we look at the nature of the stress response. If it's to a sudden threat, then that is an acute form of stress. If it's to a more sustained threat that we just simply can't resolve rapidly, then that's going to um, be classified as chronic stress. Now, an acute stress stressor will trigger the triple F response via the sympathetic nervous system activation. And that will typically be beneficial because whether we confront the threat, whether we evade it or whether we play dead, basically that response will enhance our performance, enhance our ability to survive. And we generally won't pay a heavy price for that. We'll basically recover, um, the body will return to a homeostatic state far, fairly rapidly. So what are the mechanisms involved in that acute stress response? Well, the fear center in your brain, the hypothalamus, but also the adrenal gland will trigger the release of adrenaline or adrenaline. Um, that will basically be re released into the bloodstream and then we'll get a cascade of physiological effects that will maximize our prospects for survival, increase our performance, depending on the nature of that acute stressor. So what about the mechanisms involved in a chronic stress response? Well, the HVA axis, not that we need to really know that in a high level of depth, will basically trigger a sustained release of additional cortisol in the bloodstream. Cortisol um, in the short term, in the medium term, will be highly beneficial because it will provide more energy to the body. It'll help with alertness, um, divert energy away from non-essential functions so that we can, again, maximise our performance, maximise our responsiveness to a sustained threat. But here's our point of difference. If we can't resolve that chronic stressor um, to, in a brief session, then that's going to have a detrimental effect on both the mind and the body. And this is where the general adaptation syndrome 
really comes into play, particularly in that back end of the resistance and the exhaustion phase. I've already made videos about those. But again, the point of emphasis in terms of differentiating between acute stress and chronic stress is we tend to bounce back fairly quickly from acute stress because it's short term. So we don't pay a heavy price um, in terms of the wear and tear on our body and our mind. Whereas with a chronic stressor, um, even though cortisol is our friend in the short term, in the interim, eventually we pay a price because it does create that wear and tear on mind and body.